Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community. And The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 310 of the Daily Beef Morning Show here on, and hey, if I got the TED up, I'm already ready, the Cryer Media Network. Yeah, times 10. <laughs> I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, he, Mr. Beaver A, and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. Today, recording day is Monday, February 5th, 2024, and it's going to be a good day here at the Beaver Lodge. It's actually really interesting because January seemed to plod by so slowly, and I know that there's only like 29 days in February this year, but it's like I'm sitting there, I'm going like, gee, the 5th already? Yeah. Whereas... That's what a little bit of sunlight will do, because mm-hmm. we finally had some in this part of the world. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our friends in Atlantic Canada got a little too much of other stuff. Sort of like a winter one. Well, um, yeah. So the uh, uh, folks in Atlantic Canada really got hammered this weekend. Yeah, really hammered. Uh, so much so that there's the possibility, uh, if you are living on Prince Edward Island, get some cubs. Uh, there was supposed to be a by-election today, provincially, in Borden, Kinkora. That may not be happening. So uh, if you had uh, been planning to go vote, uh, please uh, verify before you go so that you're not on the streets if you do not need to be, if uh, things are being postponed. All right. Uh, oh, we have the kids going. Hello. Good morning, kids. How are you? Kit Dan, Kit Elaine, Kit Jen. Uh, is that gray streak natural? Looks cool, but a lot of people have been asking that. Yeah, it is completely natural. <laughs> I noticed some comments about it on the Friday show. I Actually, fun story about that. You know, if you ever watched the movie Poltergeist, at mm-hmm. the end, the mother, you know, mm-hmm. she got so scared that she has this gray streak. And, you know, they say, oh, she goes, I think I'd like to keep it. I think it's a little punk. When I saw that, Back then, when I was a kid, I was maybe what? Poltergeist is like 82, is like 90. Yeah, 82. Yeah. I said, I want a gray streak. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, I, uh, big thank you goes to our podcast's founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss Fee Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. But before we do anything else, let's ask Mr. Spriggs. Uh, let's try that again. Let's ask Mr. Grizzly. How's your mental health doing today, sir? Well, good morning, sir. And uh, I would have to say that my mental health, I think, is okay today. A little little tired. Um, I went to bed at a, at a decent hour, I think 10.30. I went to bed quite early. But I, I for some strange reason, I tossed and turned throughout the night. Um, sleeping next to a blast furnace doesn't help sometimes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know. Well, well. Oh, now I'm getting a dirty look. <laughs> well, let's, she's mad let's at put me. It this way, it, 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 <laughs> uh, 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 
<laughs> it appears that at the Beaver Lodge, I'm the blast furnace. Well, well I, sometimes I the am blast as well. furnace gets so hot that I even get too hot for myself. <laughs> I, I, am, I am as well. So. <laughs> I'm always kicking off covers. Uh, so long as my feet are covered, I'm okay. <laughs> Other than that. <laughs> well, yeah, Kid Dan goes, other than the Freddy Krueger, the Poltergeist movie caused trauma. We so relate, dude. Yeah. We so relate. Those were the two scary movies that, that most got to me as well. Um, let's see. Who else do we have here in the chat today? We have Kit P and C Bio that I didn't say hello to. Kit PM Good Day. Bonjour, mon ami. Kit Mohan as well. And family. Kit Jen. Kit Vim. Good morning, my dear. Let's see. I hope I didn't miss anybody. Kit Cassie as well. Kit Mike H. Hey, nice to see you. Nice to see you. And oh, Kit Angela. There we go. My God, the chat is active already this morning. Kit Linda M. Kit Wishful. Wow. Thank you so much. So nice to have you with us. All right. Uh, Where do you want to begin? Because there's a lot to cover this morning. There, there's, there's, there's a lot to cover. There's a lot to cover. There's a you know, Canadians did well at the Grammys last night. Um, we had the NHL All Star Game in Toronto. The course of the week, uh, I didn't watch any of that. Um, I watched stuff. some well, of the stuff on Saturday. Yeah, um, but I didn't really watch the game last night. I didn't watch the Grammys. No, just I didn't get to watch all of them. I I watched a little bit of them, but I happened to fall asleep on the sofa. So well, <laughs> apparently I, I missed the, I missed the good stuff. <laughs> I was going to watch it and then I just sort of said, Yeah, I don't feel like it. I just didn't yeah. feel like it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, let's start with there, actually. Why not? Um, we had so lots of Canadians nominated at the Grammys uh, this year. And um, well, we did kind of we did pretty well. People keep on our, uh, describing it as being uh, the year of the woman at the Grammys because the big prizes were won by women. But um, some Canadians walked off with some hardware as well. We had uh, Alison Russell. And I always find this really interesting because she's Canadian, but she won, and I think it is like the best American roots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that's a style. Of music, but it's kind of. I'm not sure she might be the first person who won in that category who's not actually from the United States. I don't know. Quite possible, but yes, uh, she did win uh, for her. Um, oh darn! I, then you I noted the name of the song, and I can't remember uh, from her album. Unfortunately, it'll come to me. Uh, no but idea. along with Brandy Carlisle, um, they introduced Joni Mitchell, who I did not know. But her performance of both sides now was the first time she'd ever been asked to perform. Really? At the Grammys. Hmm. Didn't know that. Yeah. Well, things you learn. Yeah. Well, I used to watch the award thing. shows, but I lost interest years ago. I just ugh, can't be bothered anymore. Yeah. But you think that that's something that would have happened before? I mean, with the one she won last night, she had 11 before her. So mm -hmm. she's got 12 and all. You'd think somewhere along the way they would have invited her to perform? <laughs> Apparently not. Eh, interesting. Um, and then, so yeah, and uh, like I said, Alison Russell won. And uh, uh, I guess conductor, Montreal, I think it's the Montreal Symphony Orchestra. Yannick Nézé-Séguin won uh, as well for um, his work. For some reason, all the titles have left. I, anyway, tech. Uh, hopefully I will find them. Uh, and uh, there was a big surprise during the course of the evening because Céline Dion, who we all know, has um, is being affected by a neurological disorder, disorder called stiff person's disease, happened to be on well enough to present an award. I didn't know so that, that was very nice. She presented the big one. Um, people are kind of saying that Taylor Swift snubbed her. Céline Dion? I didn't see. Well, apparently she was handing the award, and it seems that Taylor Swift took the award out of the hand, but like almost like didn't even look at her, was like looking at somebody else or something. I don't know. I, Honestly, I don't care. I, I, don't, <laughs> I really don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. It's like but uh, yeah, Joni Mitchell won uh, 
for her uh, album Joni Mitchell at Newport Live. Mm-hmm. And so the, they did a live version of it. And Alison Russell won for her song called Eve Was Black. Mm. Sure, that's riled up a few people. Mm. There's, a, there's a title I'd like to... <laughs> you know, some songs you just hear the title and you think, I, I need to hear that song. Yeah, I think that's probably going to piss I, off. I think I'm going to put that one on my list. Or... And then, uh, yeah, Montreal conductor Yannick Snezesege was up for several awards in the classical and orchestral categories, and he won for Best Opera Recording as Conductor of the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra's Blanchard Champion during the pre-ceremony. So, And uh, the biggest nominee... Uh, or the ones that had the most uh, were Drake and a Canadian producer, Sarban Ganea, and both of them left empty handed. Hmm. Oh, I think Drake's exactly. already won a few, wasn't he? Yeah. Then there were other Canadian uh, nominees. There was a jazz instrumental band called Bad, Bad, Not Good, mm-hmm. and an electronic duo K by K times five or KX5, which featured Canadian DJs Joe Thomas Zimmerman, also known as Dead Mouse. Mm hmm. Uh, they didn't win in their categories, but they were nominated. Uh, Toronto alternative group Alves, uh, a Victoria heavy metal band named Spirit Box, and Vancouver's Darcy James. Uh, Darcy James argues Secret Society as well. Uh, there was also Hilario Duran and his Latin jazz big band, which is headed by a Cuban Canadian musician and Canadian. So, and they did not win. And Canadian actor William Shatner was nominated for the best spoken word in his audio book. His audio book, Boldly Go, Reflections on a Life of Awe and Wonder, and he also did not win. Well, he's he's had a few spoken word albums in his career, so. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I think he already does have some. Has been, was, a, he must was actually have a, a really good one, because he did somewhere. a version of Common People with um, Joe, God, I always forget his last name. It was a brilliant version. I, I like it better than the original, actually. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. No, he doesn't. Oh, I thought with his voice he would have had one one by now. No, he's uh, I'm, a few records, though. Yeah. I'm sorry, Grizzly, if I seem to be talking to, over you a bit. I, I, I'm not hearing you very loud in my headphones for some reason, and I'm at 100, so. There's a volume adjust. Oh, you're plugged into your console, into, into your computer, not into the mic? Yeah, because I was getting feedback when I was plugged into the mic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, for some reason today you're just particularly low. Okay, I'll turn my mic up a little bit. How's that? Ah, uh, that's better. Okay. Ah, uh, so yeah, congratulations to the Canadians who represented us well, and uh, bigger congratulations, of course, to the winners. And uh, I am looking forward to uh, watching some of the musical numbers because I do want to see what Joni Mitchell did. And apparently, uh, with the big moment of the night was Tracy Chapman yeah. joining. Holmes. Yeah for his uh, version of a fast car. And um, she doesn't, if I remember correctly, she's not like a recluse, but she she doesn't perform live that often. No, she hasn't performed live in years. Yeah. So to have her back on the stage was um, something spectacular. And she looks good and she sounds good. Yeah. Well, yeah. she... Uh... So Luke Combs wanted to uh, cover that song for some time. There's a lot of artists that have wanted to, and she's always said no. Mm-hmm. She said no, uh, because male artists wanted to cover it, and they wanted to change the uh, lyrics around. And mm. Luke Combs said, I am i don't want to change a damn thing. I just want to sing the song. And she's like, okay, what exactly do you plan on doing? And he sang a version of it, uh, of it to her over the phone. She's like, yeah, you can cover it. She's like, you have my blessing. So I, I think maybe he uh, just honored her with the song. I, I don't know what the deal was, but that's that's what I had heard. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he sang it to her over the phone, and she liked what he did with it and said, okay, you can go ahead and do it. Because hundreds of people have tried to cover it, and she wouldn't. she's never given anybody their blessing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, a, it's good. <clears throat> good version. I, look, Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. There are I'm very few songs that are perfect, and it's pretty much a perfect song. Mm-hmm. So you can't, re- I mean, you shouldn't really do too much to it. And he's, the song is very faithful to the original, the cover. But it's different. It's different enough. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I like it. When I heard it on the radio the first time, I was really surprised, actually. I was like, oh, a man's covering this? Yeah, yeah. And it's 
you know, it's a pretty straightforward, it's four chords. It's just four chords. It's simple picking. It's a real simple song structure, but it, it works perfectly because of the the style uh, that she played it and the tone of her voice and the sound of her voice, the timbre. It just, it was a perfect song. Mm-hmm. I remember the first time I heard it, I'm like, back in 88, I'm like, what, yeah. what the hell is this? And it just a new song, heard it on the radio. Then I saw the video on Much Music and I said, well, oh, that's different. I like that. I mm-hmm. like that. Because that oh, yeah. was not super common to see at the time. Yep. yep. And, and if there, we have like newer listeners that, uh, not newer listeners, but uh, younger listeners among us that were born after that time mm-hmm. and haven't heard it. Although that, although the, the new version has been so popular, I'm sure with YouTube, everybody's got to listen. Yeah, the original, take a listen. Yeah. But if you haven't, um, do take a do take a listen and uh, check out her other music too. She hasn't put out many albums, but everything she puts out when she does is way quality. Well, you want to check out the the version that she sang in front of I think eighty thousand people at Wembley and silenced the place. Mm-hmm. It was during the um, was it the Amnesty International tour? That or the anti apartheid right. tour. I can't remember. It was one of them. Uh, yeah, you know, after, it would be for something big like that. That she. Yeah, made. after Live Aid, there were a lot of um, because Live Aid was such a success and raised so much money. After that, there were quite a few other uh, concert series that took place in the late eighties and early nineties around. You know, thematically, let's raise money to put an end to apartheid. Let's raise money to put an end to, you know, whatever it was at the time. I can't remember them all. I'm old. <laughs> it was thirty five years ago. Yeah. Indeed. All right. That's it for the music part of our show. <laughs> uh, we had some uh, activity in Alberta over the course of the weekend. There were some rallies in uh, Calgary and there were rallies in Edmonton. People did come up and show up. That's good. Um, I don't know if the rally in Edmonton was was in the same place that I had mentioned when we had shown. I don't know. There's uh, one happening here in Ottawa today, apparently. Yeah, at uh, quarter to five. Yeah, um, when we sh- showed the image, because and the only reason uh, I don't know that, and I hope if somebody can, they can report to me uh, that it did happen, because I believe the one that was going around said that it was going to be at the legislature, and. Um, I think on Friday on uh, Kean Bexty's um, Twitter feed, I saw an image of that with the big thing canceled mm-hmm. on top of it. He was circulating the message that that rally had been canceled. And I was trying to figure out if it was something fake to try to get the numbers down mm-hmm. or if something happened with permits and it wasn't. And he was just you know bragging, ha ha, it's canceled and trying to torque the reason for which it was canceled. I don't know. So um, if nope. anybody can t- tell me, that would be uh, appreciated because then I saw that there was another rally going on on the 3rd somewhere else in Edmonton and it wasn't the legislature. It was one of the parks in town. And so like, well, you know, which again made me think, well, did they have to move it for some reason? Was there a security thing? Maybe they were worried about her. But I believe, like I said, I think... I heard that the one in Edmonton was at the legislature. I believe I'll I'll have to double check that. But if anybody's heard, because like I said, I don't know if this is just a a right wing tactic that uh, starts circulating information saying that things have been canceled, like this, you know, circulate the voting station has been moved or something. Yeah. To try just counter programming to try to get people not to go. Just, you know, pot stirring. This is an interesting comment from Cassie Lake here. Um, uh, Nahid unconsciously launched his NDP leadership bid with his speech. A lot of people thought the same thing, uh, myself included. Yeah, uh, for the listeners, because we haven't actually introduced that. Um, I have the video here. Right Calgary here. Mayor Nahid Nenshi. Former Calgary Mayor. Former Calgary Mayor, sorry. Yes, that's true. Showed up. He's always going to be the mayor for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mayor for life. Um, showed up at one of the events and, um, yeah, I guess might have announced, I mean, he started to speculate at least for sure whether or not he was going to run. And uh, there's been a lot of people, right? There's, like I said, we mentioned before, there has been speculation about Max Fawcett. There's also been Mm -hmm. speculation about Nate Pike. Well, that's interesting. I did not know. Yeah, host of the breakdown. But uh, yeah, Uh, if you've got a, you've got a moment from that, let's play it for our kids and cubs, Mr. Grizzly. Just a second, sir. I'll cue this up. 
and turn it on and get the sound ready and here we go on wednesday when i saw that video posted my hands were shaking when i went to hit play and for a moment for a moment i heard that soft music and that soft lighting and that soft focus and those soft words and when premier smith said as her first sentence we must love and include trans people for a moment i let myself exhale for a moment i said maybe we're going to be okay for a moment I remembered that promise that I made to that kid in Henry Wisewood High School last year who asked me if they had to be scared about living in Alberta. And I remember saying to them, Danielle Smith is many, many things. She is not a hater. I remember saying to them, she has a non-binary family member. I remember saying to them, you're going to be safe here. I hate that I was wrong. I hate that what we heard for seven minutes was cruelty. What we heard for seven minutes was lies. What we heard for seven minutes was inhumane. What we heard for seven minutes was un Albertan. And the most chilling moment was when she said, for that rare handful of parents who will not accept or abuse their trans children, we will enforce child protection laws. Let me tell you what that means. What that means is we'll deal with you later. Later, after you've been beaten up. Later, after you've been kicked out of your house. Later, after you've been murdered. Later, after you've self-harmed. Later, after you've died by suicide. Later is not good enough. I, I like angry Ninchi. Or angry like Nahid. Because yeah. his, his, his surname is Ninchi. His, his first name is Nahid. And what was it? Just just to show, uh, shine a little light on who he is as a person and uh, the, the good sense of humor that he has when, when confronting haters. Somebody uh, yelled at him, go back to where you right, came from. And he, his response was, Toronto? Oh, God, no, please, not that. Because he was born in Toronto. <laughs> Haters trying to get one in on him. And he's like, no, I'm not going back to Toronto. I like Calgary. I'm like, good on you, sir. Good on you. I like you. Yeah. Um, so I had a friend, a friend of a friend uh, knows him very well. I'm going to see if I can use the connection to maybe get him on the show. Oh, that would be wonderful. I'll see. I'll, I'll put the ask in and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Don't know that it'll work, but, uh, you know, I'll put the ask in. And yeah. see what happens. Yeah. Now, um, the part that got the good bear riled up, pardon me. Uh, I mean, all of it got the part, the good bear riled up, but he noticed a lot of the things that we oh, noticed. I you right? said soft bear, music, soft good folk. mayor. I thought you said huh? good bear. Oh, you said good mayor. I thought you said good bear. I'm like, no, no, the good mayor. Yeah, I was riled up. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yes. Okay. I need another coffee. <laughs> Ah, the morning pour. There you go. Um, oh, there, there, there's that face. He loves his coffee kits. <laughs> oh, and it's my favorite, too. It's my favorite. Kids, from, uh, kids get you somebody who looks at you like he looks like at a, cu- a cup of porn. <laughs> Happy Goat Coffee Company. Columbia Popeyan. So good. <laughs> if you want to sponsor our show, we're happy to, uh, we're happy to shell for you. Yes. Um, so, but he noticed the soft focus and all that kind of stuff and mm-hmm. the words, we love you and that it was hate and like, right. We, got, we have a very similar assessment. Uh, 
but yes, uh, I like I said, I wanted to wait till till Faye gets here to show the video and go through it. But yes, there is a part in the video where she does talk, you know, like this. We're going to do all this stuff for you, mm-hmm. and in, like, oh, and by the way, you know, for the people who happen to have not parents who won't be okay with it, well, you know, like this. There's the law, right? And then she just moved on. Yeah, and here's the thing, right? She presents this whole thing as like kids being confused yeah. and not really. Kids are not confused. Most time, like yes, there can be a statistical, you know, chance of you know. Yeah, there's a statistical chance of damn near anything, right? Yes. But I mean, people are making comparisons. You know, it's like when my kid was six, he thought he was a ninja turtle. Good thing I didn't have a state permanently glue a turtle shell on his back. The one like nobody would do that. There's Being no ridiculous. professional that would do that. I mean, there's no context in which that would happen. Well, when they talk about genital mutilation, when they make irreversible decisions, okay, to begin with, you don't walk into a clinic and get that done on day one. Number yep. freaking one. Yes, yes. You go through years of counseling before they even put you on uh, on blockers or, or, or hormones or whatever medication they put you on. You right. go through a lot of counseling first. Yep, yep. And you need to be 18 years old to have that surgery done. Correct me if I'm wrong. I... I I might not be right about that, but there, there's a lot of counseling that goes forward first. For bottom surgery, 18, top surgery as well, but there are sometimes some exceptions because, for example, there are kids that have breast cancer. Right. Kids. So there is data for top mm-hmm. surgery in Alberta for 2022 and 2023, right. but the data doesn't specify whether it's because, you know, you just had breasts cancer. that were too big and you have pain, whether it was some type of cancer or whatnot, or whether or not it had anything to do with right you know transgender funny how they but, leave that you know well there's no data there's i mean there was only 22 23 so they didn't like mm. cases so they didn't collect the data on specific specificity and i'm sure that you know when they were collecting the data last year they didn't think that this was going to be happening this year in order to create a category right but when she says a very small handful right the if you're a fan of logic aristotelian logic mm-hmm. right for your conclusion to be true, your premises have to be true. So, for example, if I say an elephant has big ears, true. Let's assume for the sake of this argument, Mr. Grizzly has big ears, true. Therefore, Mr. Grizzly, you are an elephant. Yeah. yeah, that's logic, right? Right. So you have two premises that are true, but you draw a conclusion from them that is not correct. That's called a syllogism. And a lot of people do those things. They put two facts together and then they draw a conclusion that is wrong. The other thing that they will do is they will start with a premise that is incorrect, but they will state it as a fact like it is correct. For example, Mr. Grizzly, you are a mouse. Well, I can clearly look at you and see that you are not a mouse. No, I'm not. Right? So... If one of your two starting premises is false, your conclusion necessarily can't be anything else but false. They are starting with the premise, the overwhelming majority of parents love their children when their children are trans or rainbow. Well, in Alberta, 22, 26% of LG, LGBTQ youth are told to leave home. 39% of LG, let's just say rainbow youth, attempt suicide. 43% of trans-identified youth will attempt suicide. As many as one in five homeless youth in Toronto identifies as rainbow. And they are more likely than any other youth to be on the streets and in shelters instead. Right due to homophobia and the fear of violence. That's according to PFLAG Canada, Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays Canada. Upwards 26% of gay youth are told to leave home. Mm. They're at a higher risk of self-harm, particularly if they've not come out yet and not been accepted by their family. Research indicates approximately 30% of youth suicides are by rainbow youth. And among rainbow youth, there's a 20% increase in suicide attempts for those in unsupportive environments. 
And when all those kids are homeless, and let's say they don't have another family to go to, a family of one of their friends who will take them in, if they wind up on the street, then they are at higher risk of addiction, entering the sex trade, being trafficked, being physically abused, and yes, even murdered. Mm -hmm. So you've got all these people going around saying, oh, Daniel Spill made the great decision. We support her. We love our kids. Because if you love kids, you don't put them in that situation. You just don't. Period. End of so the starting premise here is that the overwhelming majority, almost all of them, and there's only some rare, rare, rare exceptions. 26% of rainbow youth are told to leave home. That's not a rare exception. No. One in four is not a rare exception. Pretty high numbers. Even, even when we consider that uh, when it comes to what, what is 1% of the population is trans, but one in four of that 1%, mm. those are high numbers in a small uh, study group. I, I don't know what term yeah. to use there. Proportionally, they're... Thank you. It's a big number. Yeah, um, exactly. It's, and, and, and the only reason I say that is because somebody somewhere is going to go, yeah, but there's only 1% of the population. Oh, you're right. You're right. So the one in four of that 1%, what you're saying is you don't give a damn about them because somebody will present that argument. Oh, yeah. So we're acknowledging the numbers. Many. Yeah, it's not that many. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Let's, 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 to pay. let's just let children die then is what you're saying. So um, that's the thing you need to know. Everything that you're going to hear from that side is starting from the premise. Like these, for the, and again, for the majority, it is because 26%. But when we do child protection, we do child protection for the most vulnerable facing the worst possible outcome. And then you work backwards. That's not what's going on here. Starting from the assumption that since most kids are going to be safe with their families, and most kids are, that it's okay to do this. But we're not talking about one in a hundred here. We're talking about one in four. And even if it was one in a hundred, we're talking kids. So you make your policy for that one in a hundred. Because the state's supposed to protect all citizens. No exceptions. Well, in this case, they're just going to protect those they feel that are worth protecting and, you know, to hell with everybody else. Yep. Your volume has gone down again, Mr. Grizzly. <laughs> I'm just speaking very lowly. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, there's going to be a lot of trying to, uh, soft pedal and make it not seem so bad and whatnot. And, um, yeah. Um, also, there was a question asked to me because I did a spot for Dean's show. I'm not sure if it's airing today. Um, but at the time, I didn't know what this was like, if it was just regulations or whatnot. Actually, there are, they are going to have to pass this in law. And it seems that they're going to be introducing the law in the legislature this fall. So um, oh, really? we've got a lot of months mm -hmm. of this type of thing. You know, there's an opportunity, I guess, for public pressure to get them to maybe water stuff down or maybe not introduce it come the fall. However, um, it seems that the plan by announcing it this early was either hoping that people will forget about it come time in the fall, mm. and then they can just slip it through, or, I mean, they have a majority, so they can just ram it through anyway. Yes, or um, they are uh, giving it lots of lead time for lots of fundraising and lots of time to uh, scare people. So, um yeah, no, not not a good time. Uh, but as we mentioned, uh, couching all of this in uh, we love you, 
that's um yeah i i, I insidious uh, hypocritical I, I don't have the word that's strong enough or that's precise enough to describe what that is but that's and i you know it would be easy to say evil mm -hmm. right which is you know what Super. i mentioned in the previous show but if i want to find a a fancier nicer word it's not it's not coming to me but and words are my life well sometimes it's uh, so uh, a little yeah, bit flabbergasted i'm, a, I'm a particularly i'm particularly disturbed by a wanting to couch that much hate in the love language. Just, yeah, it's, um, it's almost like the question, have you no shame is not even good enough. So well, it's like <clears throat> no shame, no decency, no discernment, no anything. It's just, this is, this is just a bad thing as being done to the most innocent and the most vulnerable. It's just a bad thing. Well, when you consider the fact that uh, who did who visited Alberta recently with a big rally with Daniel Smith sitting by his side, yes. as he preached hatred on stage. Yes. Tucker, Russian asset Carlson, and I say Russian asset because he's in Moscow right now. Mm-hmm. Not making it up. It's there's photos of him in Moscow. He's in Moscow. He's in Putin's pocket. So he is a Russian asset who has come here to destroy our democracy. Just let that one simmer for a little bit, shall we? Marinate on that. And she welcomed him with open arms. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. she did. Yeah, indeed. Ah, uh, let's see. What else have we got to? Oh, this is the thing that I wanted to talk about on Friday because I was ask, asking if we had time for it. Um, there's something really, really interesting going on in the province of Quebec in two... Uh, I'm not sure what the proper translation from French to English is. It's a Carab... Uh, I'm going to say it, it, little villages um, in Quebec on Orleans Island near Quebec City. And uh, it seems that there's a war between their regional council, I'm guessing, and the citizens of the city. It seems, uh, the city, not the city, the village. It seems that um, it's a village of 97 inhabitants. Yeah, it's a village. Yeah. And they signed a petition asking for an investigation on the circumstances surrounding the hiring of the director general. And, um, well, it seems that having done that caused the council of the village of saint petre to threaten them, send them letters. They were going to threaten about 10% of their citizens if they continued harassing, intimidating, and threatening with violence the city, which is not happening. But they are considering the petition, asking them to be accountable for someone they hired and to be transparent about it as being harassment. Mm. And they're basically are threatening to sue them in court if they keep on asking. It's very bizarre, um, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> like what, 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 what? Pardon me? I, 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 this is a big pardon. <laughs> it's, uh, um, well, I lose it. I've never heard of that. I've it's never strange. heard of anything like that, such a move. Um, I don't understand it at all. Yeah. It's very bizarre. But then again, so, we are in the upside down time, right? Yeah. This is just, I, I mean, yeah. the, st the stuff I read on my news feed every day, I have to go and double check to see if it's real half the time. Because yeah. I'm thinking, no, that can't be. Oh, it's real. Oh, my good yeah. Lord. 
it's it seems that the council is saying that the people that are asking them for some transparency are um, adding venom to the social climate. Oh, how's that? How how exactly are they adding venom when they're asking for transparency? <laughs> I know. Stop lying to me. No, no, we're going to continue <laughs> lying to you and stop asking us to stop lying to you because that's venomous. This is what I'm getting out of it. I mean, maybe I'm way offside here, but please tell me if I'm wrong because that just seems to be bizarre. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, it seems that it's um, the new director general, Nathalie Paquet, someone that they hired. And they've asked them to look into it because um, they performed a freedom of information request mm -hmm. on the letter um, you get when you're dismissed. Okay, the HR. Right, draft. in 2022, when she was working for another municipality, Val de Lac, in the Laurentians. And she was dismissed for grave faults and grave negligences. But they don't say what they are. They just say They don't that, say what right? they are. Of course not. So she got fired from Val de Lac. Saint Petronil hired her. And everybody turned around and said, Oh, well, if she was let go from the other place for these types of things, why are we hiring her? Mm hmm. We That's would like some answers. Seems like a reasonable question, right? And it seems that the municipality on the 20th of December, oh, it's not to 10, oh, sorry, it's, yeah. Sorry. All 95 of the signatories of that petition received a letter telling them to cease all pursuits seeking to obtain personal information and confidential information concerning Madame Paquette. All dissemination of information and documents concerning her and any public intervention that could affect her private life and her reputation. They say we have had a rigorous exercise and there is no reason for you to be asking questions. Mm. Uh huh. Let's just silence them. So I'm not sure how what's going to happen there because, you know, it's as we were learning here with the media, when someone slaps you with that type of suit, you either have to be able to afford a lawyer to fight it or... And it was, yeah. It's, it's a just, small village of a... <laughs> just a handful of it, people. It's a wee tiny little space, a little, a little speck on the map, if you will. But, so uh, they figure they can just go ahead and do whatever they want to them and get away with it. It's like nothing says don't look here. Like if you ask too many questions, we'll sue you for defamation. Yeah, it's it's bad. Very wow. very very bad. Yeah. So I'm hoping that, uh, but by trying to make the issue go away, they made it worse. Well, they made it worse because the Journal du Québec and everybody is reporting about it. It's on the news all over the place that these. Uh, these people who are running the municipality, I guess, who believe they are untouchable, just said, um, you ask too many questions. It would be a shame if something happened to your mortgage, eh? You know, that, that old chestnut, right? Mm-hmm. Yee. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, do you have anything? I do, actually. Uh, in regards to what is happening here in the province of Ontario with Doug Ford's latest scandal... Uh, because the, the spotlight's been taken off that for a couple of days, but I want to go and revisit it with this handing over of Service Ontario kiosks to uh, Staples. Mm. And remember, the, the, the head of Staples Canada used to be on the Loblaws board, and let's not even go into Loblaws just yet with Jenny Byrne being a lobbyist for Loblaws while she's also the head, basically is the puppet master of the, the Conservative Party in, Ontario, in, in Canada, I should say. So... Here, here's the thing about this. Um, there are people across this province of Ontario who said, well, what about when, when Dalton handed over stuff to Canadian Tire? I'm like, yeah, I disagreed with that too. Why didn't we hear about it then? I didn't have a podcast then. <laughs> I'm like, 
That happened a long time ago. And I disagreed with it at the time, just as I disagree with what Doug is doing. And people in the province are really pissed, especially individuals such as this woman who uh, had suddenly had her livelihood from her when old Dougie and his minions decided to shut down the businesses and said, you can't say anything about it. Well, <clears throat> this, uh, this lady uh, is not going to be silenced. She is speaking out. Former Service Ontario owner speaks out. Let's have a listen to what she has to say. It's about a minute and a half, a little over there. Here we go. I can't make it any bigger, unfortunately. Speak to Claudia, who's lost her livelihood. I have no job, no pension, no unemployment. How long have you owned the Service Ontario? I've owned it for 23 years. I had four full-time and one part-time employee. Did you have to pay them severance? I did have to pay severance. But did you get any money from the government I for that? I got nothing from the government. Were asked to open longer? We were never asked. During our conversation came a knock at Claudia's now shut her door. It was Carol looking to renew her health card. I live very just not far away. So they're, move, they're moving it to Staples. When are you making that? I'm not happy about it. Why? I think because I just read too that Staples is laying off people. That's right. Yeah, so I don't understand this. Was this convenient for you? Yes, very convenient. Good parking, very convenient. We personally constructed all this. It probably cost me upwards of $40,000 of my own money. So how does it feel when you hear Staples is getting one and three quarter million taxpayer dollars for their construction? It's just, it's, it's a kick in the gut. If you could send a message to the Premier, to Todd McCarthy, what would it be? I've given my entire life to this. And I've been left high and dry. And I, I felt like I've just been treated very poorly. And I've been a PC my entire life. I was head of the Youth Progressive Conservative Organization when I was 18 years old. And I've stuck by them my whole life. I'm finally done. The government has called this whole thing a pilot project for three years, but Claudia says she doesn't see it that way. She's ended her lease and packed up her store. In Welland, Richard Southern City News. For the people. No, for the rich people. Screw the rest of us. She gave her whole life. To the party. Well, her whole life. 23 years to that business, was a mm -hmm. lifelong PC member. She had to pay to have it built. Mm -hmm. She was and given Staples. very We're little We're building warning. it for Staples. And Staples just laid off, I think, 1,600 people or something like that. I think. Um, I'm not sure about the number. Pardon? I heard 300. Oh, I heard 1,600, but I might have mixed that up with something else. Um, no, it's, it, it's not. Sorry, Linda, you got it mistaken. It's. Uh, a three-year pilot project with Staples is what the rumor is. And, and well, that's what the, the, the PC government in Ontario has said, a three-year pilot project with Staples. But we know that's not the case. This is not a pilot project. We're building it for them. This is a, this is a gimme to Staples by the people of Ontario, and we had no say in it. And the worst part is we're paying for 100% of it, and they're trying to hire people to... Uh, create new profit margins on this program. Services. They're, they're, they're going to push. <sighs> yeah, capitalism, eh? Yeah. I say, t 23 years, they come in, they take your business pretty much mm -hmm. overnight, don't compensate you in any way. And then they find out, she finds out after that the $40,000 she needed to put in to build it, well, those already have too much are getting help with that too. Mm -hmm. And they're not compensating her for stuff like severance pay that she's forced to pay because they took her business out from under. Yeah. Because... Uh, Canadians, if you're listening, particularly those who uh, don't vote progressive parties, this is what conservatives, in terms of politicians, do. Well, this and, is and what they do. They just change the rules in the middle of the game, and uh, if you get screwed, you 
get screwed. Too bad. And, and Hugh says here, this is not capitalism. I agree with you, it isn't. It isn't capitalism. This is uh, draconian measurements by a, a um, dictator, basically, is what it is. Yep. It's corporate socialism. It's exactly what it is. It's not capitalism. Yeah. Definitely not capitalism. I mean, there wasn't even tendered bid. No, they just handed it to them. That is corporate welfare, as we like to say, which I'm so tired of. And, and friends of mine, again, some of the conservative guys that I hang out with, they're like, they've had it with corporate welfare. They're sick of it. Sick of it. I'm like, stop, stop. Like, stop handing money over to people who will do nothing but put it in their pocket. Mm hmm I'm uh, looking up at some news clips here. It just keeps on saying just an unspecified number of layoffs. So okay. it doesn't seem that there's a number announced. So I guess people are speculating the numbers that we have, 300 or 1,600. Or I'm guessing based on some calculations maybe that economists are making or mm -hmm. something. But, uh, I don't know yeah. the number then, so I was wrong. I must have been thinking about something else. That happens. you know. I do get confused sometimes. Yeah. And something then uh, you... Uh, just to, for other people listening, uh, something that you might hear some BS is like, it wasn't sole sourced. It wasn't sole sourced. Staples got some contracts and Walmart got contracts. Oh, yeah, right, there's a couple right. of Walmarts that got contracts yeah. too. But let's remember, it's not every town has a Staples. Or a Walmart. Or has Walmart, right. So just because two different companies get a contract to do the same thing, doesn't mean that the contract can't be sole sourced. Mm -hmm. Sole sourced doesn't mean that only one person can win the contract. Sole source means that only one person is offered an opportunity to quote bid on the contract. There's no wherever it's, it's in given. effect. Yeah. So in the places where Walmart got some, it's not like Staples was there saying, "Hey, wait a minute, we could do it better," yeah. because. They weren't asking who can do it better or cheaper. They were just handing them out. They were just giving. So odds them. are where the Walmarts got them, there is no staples. You get a service, and you get a service, and you get a service, and you get a service. But you, nah, screw you. Oh, we're taking yours away. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Sole source has to do with the bidding process, not the number of people who get contracts. That's right. And yeah. since there was no bidding process. Yep. Yeah. Some people are trying to torque that. Well, at these all source staples and Walmart got contracts. Yeah. That, do we talk about Jenny Byrne? Do we talk about, uh, th you know what? Let's, let me show you this. Let me show you this here quickly. Uh, this is from Max Fawcett. And I know everybody has probably seen this by now. The federal government has put tens of billions of dollars towards this program. Some provinces like Alberta have put zero dollars towards it. So no, it's not nationalization. And yes, some provinces are deliberately trying to break it. Here it is, Matthew Lau. There it is. As the Trudeau government's effective nationalization of childcare implodes the sector, the reply is blame the provinces. Provinces knew the deal when they signed on to $10 a day childcare. See, the problem is that the provinces are not funding what they're supposed to be funding. They're not holding up their end of the deal. They're holding yep. money back. And Alberta is really getting hit hard by it right now. I just feel for Alberta, man. You're just getting hammered from nine different directions by a horrible human being running your province. It's just yep. one thing after another lately. It's like, good God, yep. can, can, can Berta get a break, please? And I, I genuinely do mean that. Because you've got this horrible person, Daniel Smith, who is treating you, well, treating people like they're stupid and trying to massage them into thinking everything is all good and everything is fine and it's Justin Trudeau's fault for everything. Yep. <laughs> no, indeed, indeed. No, it's, um, like I said, it's when we did our show with JB and we were talking about the uh, article that, uh, opinion piece that Max Fawcett wrote and we talked about like, you know, Here's all the provinces screwed you on housing, and here's all the provinces screwed you on mm -hmm. post-secondary education. And here's how the provinces screwed you on. This is just another of example of it, right? It's just another example of it, where you're um. <sighs> it used to be it was giving with one hand and taking with the other. Like we'll give you a bonus on your disability check, but hey, oh, there's a clawback over here. Ooh. But uh, this is just straight up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, uh. 
man, this is just straight up. Hey, but yeah, you just keep operating and um, yeah, um, you float us for a while. And um, yeah, when we feel like we want to get around giving you some money, we'll uh, do that. But even though you were supposed to have this money from the get go and you planned around it and getting it, but we're just, we're just going to hold on to this for a little while longer. Okay. And then they should turn around and they go, well, inflation. Mm-hmm. It's like, we, you know, things are cost. Well, yeah, but that's what the you knew the deal part is. It's like, you signed on for this amount. This amount did not come with an ins- inflation escalator. You guys knew that when you signed. It's up to you to take care of the inflation part. Do your job. And now they're like, no, I don't want to. Well, of course. I'm just going to distribute the money I got, no matter what it get, no matter what it buys. But well, that's that wasn't the deal. Blame Ottawa. <laughs> mm-hmm. We got three point eight billion dollars. We didn't manage it well. But blame Ottawa. It's it's Ottawa's fault with the money that we didn't spend that we were supposed to spend that they gave us. What? <laughs> Again, oh, that money was for health care. Can't write. Oh, these. Can't I'm write sorry. These. Um. I spent it on something else. Can I have some more? Mm -hmm. With also no strings? Yeah. I'm tired of this. I'm really really fed up with it. Me too. It's just, it's the same broken record skipping over and over again. And these are the same people that then complain about equalization and get that part wrong. Yeah. I'm paying so much money to Ottawa and it's going to some places. You're not paying a cent to Ottawa code for equalization. You're paying cent to Ottawa, your taxes to Ottawa, like you're supposed to under the law. And then Ottawa decided it would create an equalization fund and say, we're not going to keep all this money for us. We're going to give some back. And, and Provinces who, don't pay into equalization. And who wrote those But rules? on the other hand, when they get money from the government, mm. They turn around and says, oh, you want us to be, you actually want us to spend this on the thing we said we were getting it for? You're not the boss of me. <laughs> it is, it's just, oh. well, they lie about the money coming in. They lie about the money going out. Well, look over here. Look over here. Don't look there. It, just, it never ends. More examples. I've got one more example here of hypocrisy and idiocy. Idiocy? I don't know. Ignorance? How about just blind hatred? I'm going to share this 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 uh, tweet because I know we have to wrap up shortly. And this was something that took place on, on uh, February 3rd. So that was, what, Saturday? Mm-hmm. This was uh, posted um, this is from the Prime Minister's Twitter feed. And he says, there's oh, always yes. time in the schedule for some lightsaber trading. It's a 25 second video and he's talking to this young man about how to do it. And then I scroll down and I see this guy, king of good times, Trudeau, bro, my rent is $1,700 for a small one bedroom apartment. My employer has not even given me a rise. I'm stuck at minimum wage making 2,500 a month. Why do you think it's appropriate to post this while everyone else is suffering? So my response was, I'm just here for the ratio. Thing is, if you're in that situation, why are you driving a Porsche? How can you afford it? Funny thing that. So let's just click on his little Twitter feed here, shall we? And we'll just scroll down to him sitting in a Porsche, watching football on his screen in his Porsche. But he earns minimum wage. Oh, nice watch. Yeah. He's got a Rolex and he's in a Porsche. Well, I'm not sure if it's a Rolex. No, it's a president. Trust me. Oh, there you go. Actually, I'm not a president. It looks more like a sub. I collect watches, so I, I know we're Rolex when I see one. I just... So, I mean, it, they can't even lie well. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know if he's, if he's a paid member of the CPC, if he's a boss. I don't know, man. I don't care, but I'm just going to call out liars for lying and not even creating a good lie tell a completely fabricated story about, I can't afford this. My rent's this much. I only earn this much, but I have a Rolex and a Porsche. <laughs> like, come on, man. Really? How, how stupid do you think we are? <laughs> well, speaking of this, um, there's another thing going on here. Uh, when we're talking about people misrepresenting stuff and, um, Got this again. Uh, 
there was that lady, uh, oh God, I can't remember her name now. She was PCMP and she said, how Justin, how do I explain this bill to my constituent? Remember we talked about that on a previous mm-hmm. show and they were showing a, a bill with the carbon charge and whatnot. And you know, they were saying this much carbon she says, well, if you can't explain how carbon works and you're an MP, you know, you have a problem. So here we go. We have these, you might be seeing these going around mm-hmm. social media a lot. These gas bills. Oh, I got to pay my own. Charges for natural gas, customer charge, delivered to you, transportation to Enbridge, gas supply charge, cost adjustment, all those, all those charges. And they regularly show the federal carbon charge being as high or higher than the gas supply charge. Mm-hmm. On this bill, it says gas supply is $73.31 and the carbon charge is $75.34. Now, that means that the price of the carbon tax is actually more expensive than the gas. Which is not actually the case. Which is not actually the case. So when I saw that number, I'm going, hmm, wait a minute. And of course, they're not upset by the customer charge or the delivery charge or the transportation charge or the cost yeah. adjustment, right? Just the total up to more. So. Is that like this a car- quarterly charge for for carbon? Because December 23rd to January 23rd on that bill. Okay. So it is just for one 30-day period. Okay. So I went back into my bills. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't use one for this year Mm -hmm. because we got a heat pump. Right. And my gas charge is zero. Right. Because you're not using it. This was for January last year. Mine. All right? Mm -hmm. My my commodity charge was $54.18. My carbon charge was $23.84. Not even half. Right. All right. And, and what now, do you get back in the rebate? More than what you put into it, correct? Yes, yes. And then if it's a little blurry, but here it says how many cubic meters of gas I consumed and what the charge for the gas. So it's 20, 22 cents per cubic meter at that time. The federal carbon charge was about 10 cents, less than 10 cents per cubic meter. Now, we're one year later. The carbon price went up. It's now 12 cents or 13 cents per liter. But if I adjust that, assuming I would consume the same amount of gas and probably consumed less this year because the weather was nicer and warmer, um, adjusted to 2029 numbers, my gas charge would be $29.72, which is a little more than half of my gas charge, assuming I consumed the same amount of gas. The bills that they're going around are showing the federal carbon charges being more. Yeah, that doesn't really work, does it? It's a lie. You think it's All those conservative shot? MPs that are showing these gas bills and going, how do I explain this? They're lying to you. They're actually showing you doctored gas bills. Well, that's what I figured. But now we have the proof. Because I decided, hey, let's compare it with... Rather than looking at it on the internet and going, oh my God, this is terrible. Well, wait a minute, is this true? Let's compare it to my gas bill. And uh, this gas bill, the guy who posted it, they say that their Twitter account is from Ontario, and I'm from Ontario, so it's uh, our gas prices are not going to be that wildly different. And it's the same carbon fee. So, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. They will lie about everything well and, and i've i've seen recently where some members of mainstream media have started to call out the lies and not necessarily members of the media uh guests that they have on panelists are calling it out and um what's his name fella uh who's power and politics from newfoundland his name is escaping me david david cochran david cochran he's been calling out the lies lately too so sir well done good job Let's not let liars get away with lying anymore. 2024 is the year of the pushback. We're fed up with it. Canadians are fed up with it. We've had it. We've had it up to here. Let me just lower the bullshit so I can get my head above it to breathe again. We're, yeah. we're tired. We don't want it anymore. And now we're angry because now they're coming for children. And that is a bridge too far for, I think, the vast majority of Canadians. Center, left, and center right, which is the vast majority of Canadians. 
the extreme left and the extreme right is a very small percentage of the population. And I'm not fond of either one of them because extremes are never good when it comes to politics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the liberals are pushing back a little bit uh, on that thing with uh, Jenny Byrne here. Yes. Uh, over that. the weekend, they, they put they're something out. they politely, though. Twitter, very yeah. They're polite about it. Absolutely. Yes, but they're you know, saying, hey, this is why. You know, you want to know why your grocery bills are not going up. Mm. Well, you have Jenny Byrne, who's yeah. lobbying for Loblaws, and you had Melissa Lansman, who used to lobby for Walmart. Mm -hmm. says, you know, if we use the Jagmeet Singh line, you can't trust those who broke it to fix it. Mm -hmm. Just saying. A lot of people are turning around and saying, oh, yeah, well, about that Loblaws 12 million. Okay. Now, first of all, that ad that you're doing right now, tying Jenny Byrne to the fact that the you know, conservatives are saying they're going to lower your, your food bill while at the same time, you need to take that, you need to make that an internet ad and place it on in those five seconds before every video. Mm -hmm. And you need to make it a TV ad and you need to put it during hockey and Raptors games. Yes. Because that's the type of stuff that will turn the dial. Well, the party telling you, we're going to lower your food bill. And when they have somebody actually taking money and they go, well, what about that Loblaws money that, you know, that they got for like, the that 12 million for those freezers? We gave Loblaws 12 million for those freezers. Those freezers were better for the environment. They did the equivalent of taking 50,000 cars per year off the road mm -hmm. and got Loblaws to throw 60, 36 million of their own into it. So we I, know what we got for that twelve million dollars. This is money that Jenny Burns' firm mm -hmm. got paid to, get, to yeah. do lobbying. Nobody knows what we got for that money. And then you got some people like Sun Lori going, "So it isn't Jenny Burns that made the money. It's this guy over here." Well, I'm not sure it's Sun Lori, but other mm -hmm. people there are saying, "You know, this this is what you you got here." And, and Sun Lori's going, "Well, no, she only worked for these divisions and only in Ontario and whatnot." It's like. The one who's saying that, the first one, it's not Jenny Byrne who got the money, it's this guy. He's a lobbyist who works for a company. Jenny so Byrne. he gets paid. She takes her cut. Yes. <laughs> All right. She got paid. All right. <laughs> Jenny got paid by Loblaws. The other one is we paid Loblaws. We gave them 12 million for them to put in 36 million. The money's flowing in two different directions. Well, something okay. about the, when you're doing this million, comparison, the, something about the 12 million that I, I was never happy about it, right? To see Loblaws get a handout. But here is the thing I, I, I researched it a bit. I didn't like it. I was not happy about it because I didn't want to see more corporate welfare. But there was a program by the government, it was a grant. If you apply for the program and you qualify, you meet the requirements doesn't matter how big or how small you are as a company. Yeah. If you meet the requirements, you get the grant. It's as simple as that. I and that works right across the board. One or Pardon? I think about 100 companies got one. Yes, that's right. So it was, a, it was a, a national program to help companies green. Go green. And, and, and it wasn't paying for all of it. Like you said, they had to put in 36 million of their own dollars. So again, I'm still not happy about it, but I do understand that's how it works. And that 36 million created jobs. Yeah. Well, and, and you also need to go back to bon, uh, Bombardier, how, how many times they've come with hat in hand asking Ugh. the federal government for money, right? Yeah. When, when Nortel crashed and burned, I remember saying, why is the, isn't the government helping them out? And I had a friend who was working in that department at the time, and he pulled me aside and said, they didn't ask us. I went, oh, you need to remember Bombardier came and requested help. Nortel did not. Yeah. And the government cannot just give them money. They can't do that. You have to go and make the ask. Nortel didn't because they didn't want to. They wanted to break it up and sell it off so they could put, put more money in their pockets. They didn't give a damn about the people who lost their life savings or the people who lost their pensions or the people who lost their jobs. They didn't care about them. They were able to, to pad their own pockets. Indeed. So, yeah. And uh, as we're learning with the Service Ontario stuff, a whole bunch of lobbyists, I think it was Toronto dot resident or T dot resident on uh, Twitter, yeah. who did, did cross reference between uh, everyone. And it's like, well, we're at 10 now. <laughs> so, okay, maybe we should just assume that most of them did. And, you know, and 
Sorry, those are private colleges. Private colleges. Right. Sorry. Yes. Donated. All the, a lot of them that got licenses. And, yeah. Stupid so, colleges. just greasy, 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 greasy. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. All right. Kits and Cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Please make sure to tell your peeps and poops all about us because democracy is something that you do. Uh, make sure to sign the Hamilton Helps petition. Uh, write your MPs, your MLAs to be asking for a national food program and all the good stuff and to uh, actually be doing rights uh, by trans children. If you are in Alberta, ask for a meeting with your MLA because if this is a bill that has to be presented in September, uh, maybe enough pressure will make them. Uh, Decide that they don't want to go ahead with that, and uh, it's you know you have you actually have to tell them that not only are they going to lose your vote, but that you are going to kind of make it your mission to make sure that they lose and that you're going to organize against them. Right, not just I'm going to vote for you. I'm so mad about this uh, that I'm going to dedicate myself to making sure that you do not win. That really scares them. Yeah, it does, and and. As, as Bruce Fanjoy, uh, you may have noticed, he is making a big dent in the Carlton writing where Pierre Polyev is currently the sitting MP. I, I think it would be wonderful if the, the, the leader of the Conservative Party, the loyal opposition, so, <laughs> lost his seat in the next election. <laughs> yeah, well, if he feels that he's going to be ruining, losing his seat, you know, uh, if he sees at the polls, he's just going to run for a nomination somewhere in Alberta or Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, picks his own problem that way. Sadly, can do that. Um, yeah, sadly. So yes, please share everything. If you'd like to make sure that you don't miss an episode, uh, the QR code under my chin brings you to our pod page. Thanks to the Ray Girl, it's still around. That's podpage.com slash the True North Eager Beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. Thank you so very much. And if you want to support us in other ways, please go to our YouTube page, True North Eager Beaver Media on YouTube, and uh, like, share, and subscribe. Smash with all the buttons, make like, hit the lane, and have a fun time. And if you'd like to support us yet in another way, the QR code above Mr. Grizzly's head brings us to our coffee page. That's coffee, ko-fi.com, uh, slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And there you can make a donation to the Emergency Hydration Fund. Uh, so we appreciate that as well. We did the Because Democracy is Something You Do part already. So, Mr. Grizzly, do you have any words of wisdom and do you have an ASMR tonight? Uh, ASMR is a go-ahead for this evening. Uh, I, I have to apologize to everybody for missing it last week. I tried several times to get a show out and I just couldn't make it happen because the schedule was just so booked. And then my personal life uh, with work, I just couldn't free up any time, but I will do one this evening. So I, I have a show tonight and as for words of wisdom, oh man, just try and hold on, get some sunshine, get some fresh air, go out, take a walk and clear your head. Everything is pretty terrible right now. I understand that. And I understand how that can affect your mental health. So take a deep breath, go for a walk. It's all going to be okay. All right. Kids and cubs. That's the end of the show. Uh, I won't be back with an Easter egg after the credits, though, because I have a bus to catch in exactly two minutes. All right. I'll see you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music.